So I'm a landscape artist and I paint outside on plein air. So my normal thing is to take my paintings outside and I usually start them outside almost always in a place that I feel there's an inspiration to paint here kind of thing. And um, there's always something that calls me to it. And I've been doing this for a long time, 45 years. Um, and it just causes me to feel in touch with nature and very, very calm. And I've learned to be non-aggressive with my painting. So it's totally different than what we do with the people, the participants in the Art of Living uh, project, which I absolutely love. It's a whole different aspect of my art. Um, and I got, uh, I got a participant who was, who was dying of cancer, actually. He was uh, terminally ill, and he knew it. And he was facing that, and his family was trying to cope with that. It's just a young man, 50-something, uh, and, you know, a teenage children and a wonderful wife. So we met fairly often. He was sick some of the time, and I ended up coming to his house quite often. And what I found out is you really, really get to know these people. We connect on a very deep spiritual level. Um, what he wanted to do was paintings of what life was going to be like when he wasn't there. And it's totally different than teaching art. So a lot of us artists who are in this program are used to teaching, but we have to undo all that and realize this, we're not really teaching somebody how to paint. Maybe they'll want to learn how to paint, which is fine. We'll help them with that. But it's, it's just a six-month program, and the program is to get in touch with your feelings through creativity and also with what you're experiencing. So whatever you're experiencing, whether it's waiting for another diagnosis, whether it's that you have to go to hospital or um, getting to know a new doctor, all those things, or one of the main things is just facing family and friends with this whole thing that you have to kind of deal with. So that's the kind of thing that we're trying to help people with while they do art. Regardless, if you have money, you don't have money. Well, it, 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 does, it doesn't discriminate, and I've seen that just by sitting in the cancer center, taking chemo, young, old, it doesn't matter, your race, it's, it's just, and I think you think, well, you, what you really come out with, what I've come out with is that this is not a rehearsal, so you only have one chance and enjoy and make the best of it and uh, it's short and your life can change in a split second. I think that during my experience with cancer it was like all of a sudden I was plucked out of this world I was in <laughs> and I was somewhere else and it was like I felt like I was looking out at my life from behind my real life. Do you know what I mean? Like I felt like I was looking looking out at my life from somewhere that I had no idea where I was and I, and I didn't have any idea how I was going to make it through and because of the drugs and the chemo and all the other you know stuff that we go through that's so invasive I thought that I would never be myself again. I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something because, well this is going to sound kind of weird, but when I was thinking about writing my obituary <laughs> and who was going to write it, I wanted to have something in it other than she was a wife and mother and a home care worker. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to have something that somebody would say, oh, I didn't know she did that. Yeah. Sure. I just want to have an interesting life. I've had my, as I call it, oh, cats don't, yeah, they do, had my uh, put back together surgery. So now I'm whole and I'm better, and here's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a rare, rare type of cancer. They're, they don't understand it. They're talking with the states and Halifax. and So now I'm waiting for an, I've got an appointment on 17 with the oncologist. And then he wants to send me to Halifax to meet with this other doctor who deals with multiple malignancies. 
because he says, I don't understand this. They've been talking to the states. The states have never seen anything like it. You know, am I going to die because I lost my parents? And just prior to starting chemo, I lost my oldest brother. My brother next to me has had cancer three times, and I'm the only, la I'm the last one, my, my one brother alive yet. Cancer is a deadly disease. It spares no one, from the rich to the poor, young or old. A cure has been sought for many a year. None has been found with all the research, money and gold. First diagnosed, just wanted to run away to our cabin by the lake. Asked the question, why me, Lord, why me? My first one, um, well, I wanted them to reflect my family because that's what it's important. And the first one reflects my husband and I, and that's what we enjoy to do is the four-wheeler. And this one here is my, my son, baseball, and then my grandchildren, that's Aiden. He um, loves hockey and baseball. The chemo consumes your body. I mean, you know, you can get through it, through uh, chemo without getting, you know, really sick. But it's a feeling you can't describe. How your body just doesn't feel the same. And of course your energy is just gone. And you have tastes in your mouth, metal tastes. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. And you're not yourself. You're not yourself. Um, there's a lot of dark days. You wonder if this could be real or fake. Healing comes in many ways. Doctors, nurses, family and friends. Prayers are so powerful, they won't be in vain. Don't be afraid to ask for divine intervention. All of these treatments will help with the pain. It came as a shock. It, it was a, I, w I was going into surgery for something totally different. And when I woke up, it was like, you have a colostomy. It's like, what? Now I had the colostomy because my colon had burst. And I had no idea. I was home for days with a, a burst colon. But it was because I was used to the pain that I was having. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize. Didn't recognize. I didn't recognize it was a different pain. But there are such intense seconds that really the whole work of art hinges on that first look. Just like meeting somebody for the first time. But anyway, we've got one painting pretty much done. And we're going to have probably, we're going to take up a lot of wall space. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, a big like woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they are going to be, they're going to be life size. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go big or stay size. home. <laughs> life size. Yeah. Decisions to be made, short term or long term, to take chemo or not. Think about quality of life. How's your family dealing with your illness? Can you make it easier for them to deal with the strife? You are blessed if you have family to help, for they will do their best to help you heal. It's not easy to fight this on your own. I'm back in my own world. I'm a different person. But I found this project was also very um, very gentle and very and very intimate, if I can use that word in terms of, because it's so, even though we have tried to find a lot of ways, it's just been, it's like, it's, it's an experience I've never had before. It's, it's her, her story, more or less, and, uh, even though we're kind of working on that together. Um, and she loves to talk a lot more than I do. <laughs> she can really talk a lot. Uh, times when I have to, you know, tell her to stop talking, let's get to work. Like, <laughs> sitting there yakking, and it's like 20 minutes gone by, but anyway, that's, that's a good part of it, though, is to be able to just talk and chat and get to know one another. It was, it was eye-opening. It was a good experience. Um, it's, I'm hoping the message that people will get from seeing this is that, yes, we have to meet many kinds of adversity in our life, but if we smile through it or try to smile through it and find things that'll make us happy, that no matter what we can celebrate, I think I celebrate life more now 
as a result. And that's a cliche. I know people say it often, but it is true. All of a sudden you reflect more, you appreciate more. So living in that moment and enjoying it and celebrating life more so. This painting, we decided to just be abstract. And um, so we, we just got into color to begin with on this particular painting. And uh, so she decided that black is a good symbol for her husband because he won't wear anything except black. <laughs> Every time he wears, he gets a new t-shirt, <laughs> Heather says, why don't you get some other color? And it's always black. So we started with black, the foundation of her family, her husband, who's very, very supportive, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike. And, uh, and he took, he's taken a big part of the, the section of the painting, even more than half because he's very important to, uh, to Heather and really important with all this problem with cancer and so on. Well, I'd say I'm very different. I think that uh, things that, uh, I didn't think I'd get emotional. I haven't cried in like, I don't know when, but I just don't see things the same anymore. Things that were important, or I thought were important, aren't anymore. They understand you and know how you feel. Like the old cliche, one day at a time. Get up in the morning, breathe in the air, and see the sun. Take a walk through the woods, enjoy nature. Travel the rivers and lakes. Try your best to have fun. Just go about your daily chores. Keep up your hobbies and sports as best you can. Try not to worry, just be yourself. Pack up your family and go for a drive in your van. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a paradoxical feeling. You feel two very different ways at once. These are the kind of things that art deals with, actually. You know, art deals with those kind of feelings that are vague and transitional and not fixed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's one reason we do art. Complex feelings. My art project is all positive. Like before, before this diagnosis, it was work, home, homework, supper, bed, like just routine, just crazy. And my little fella got to join the hockey team, and he got to go tobogganing when he wanted to, and I fished and skating and do all kinds of stuff that we never could do before because we worked till five or six o'clock, and by the time we got home, it was like say supper, homework, and bed. So he's having the year of his life, and that's what the project is based on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the really. best year of his life basically is. Huh. Is that because you, could, <coughs> you had to leave work? Yes. Mm. Yeah. There's a slant. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 So it's all positive and all huh. happy pictures and yeah. yeah. And you're feeling well enough to do all that even though you're so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Very therapeutic. And Catherine and I would talk as well. I find it therapy that way. So. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Highly recommend. Even if you think you can't draw, well, or paint, rather. I think I used to say, wow, how could they, how can they do that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it takes a certain person to be able to, to do that and to let their mind go there, which I, I would just sit back and I truly understand why people pay what they pay for art, because you can sit back and look at it, and you can enjoy it. And you can let your mind go anywhere, if you want. <laughs>